Basic important concept. We live in an analog world. No matter what anybody tells you, you know, <laughs> we live in an analog world and, and always will. If I push on the tabletop, I don't do that in a binary fashion. I'm pushing in infinitesimally small increments that are, you know, just infinite, right? There's, there's no, nothing digital about that at all. So we're converting the analog world into the digital realm. And to do that, we have to talk the language of computers, which is binary. And so an analog to digital converter takes what we call con a continuous time signal. You know, nice smooth signal changing over time. And it converts it into binary snapshots in, in little time slices. Because that's the only way we know how to do it. So graphically, if we have the signal shown in red, what we're really doing is we're sort of making a histogram of the data in, in real time. We've got two properties. How fast do we sample? In other words, how many time slices do we take? And then what's my resolution on the amplitude steps? That's all there is to 80, 80 converters. <laughs> it's amplitude and at what time slice. Now, using a, using a sampling process that happens more often and has more steps uh, basically reduces the analog to digital conversion uncertainty. The little boxes here are designed to show that, you know, it's, we're taking a continuously changing signal and we're converting it into, into freezing, freeze frames of a certain level. So the little boxes here are the levels of uncertainty. The uncertainty is less when we sample faster or we have more resolution. So how do you know what sampling rate to use? Well, uh, I'm sure some of you in the room have heard of the Nyquist theory. I'm sure some of you have probably had other theories um, put forth about how you choose how fast to sample something. But in the impact world, you don't have to make your own decision. SAJ211 says that your sampling frequency will be 10 times F sub H. What's F sub H? F sub H is the highest frequency of interest. And in the case of impact data, that's 1,000 hertz. 1,000 sample or 1,000 hertz bandwidth means a minimum sampling rate of 10,000 samples per second. Now, do, does SAJ211 say I have to use 10,000? Absolutely not. It just says you have to use at least a 10 to 1 ratio between the frequencies you want to recreate <coughs> And the, and the sampling rate. A lot, of the, a lot of labs these days are going to um, 20,000 samples per second because you simply get better fidelity on the data. Now, does it really matter in terms of injury calculations? Probably not for things like aerospace seed testing. But because the technology has evolved so, so well, you know, why not, why not have data that's collected with higher fidelity? So that, that comes along. Now, um, there's a lot of interest in, in blast mitigation these days in the, in the military. And so some of the other projects we're working on are actually um, building data recorders with much higher measurement bandwidths. So we're building some recorders now that measure 30 kilohertz data and sample it 120,000 times a second. But that's mostly for the case where, you know, they're trying to protect, protect a guy in a, a military vehicle that drives over a bomb very fast, you know, you think that, you know, a sled test or a crash test is over fast, the, the bomb blasts are, are terrible. So th that is a reason to use different frequencies. So I won't even ask for a show of hands, but I'm sure some of you have heard the term aliasing or anti-aliasing. Um, I've tried to distill this to the simplest explanation I can, and it's, it's not always easy. But aliasing is Something that happens if we digitize or take an analog signal into the digital realm and we don't do it right. For example, if I try to digitize a 7 kilohertz analog waveform with a 10 kilohertz A to D deconverter, it's going to be horribly what we call aliased. That's because I simply don't have enough samples to recreate the waveform properly. Simple rule, aliasing occurs when you digitize signals of any kind of significant amplitude with a frequency content greater 
than one half the sampling rate. <laughs> so if I have a 10,000 sample per second system and I get a 5,001 hertz input signal, it, it's going to be just distorted beyond all recognition. What this graph here shows is if we don't have the proper filtering in place, that the high frequency waveform I'm tracing here, okay, if you present that to an A to D converter that's sampling at where each one of the dots are, what will happen is this input waveform will be very poorly reconstructed as a waveform of much lower frequency. And that's what we call an alias. I simply don't have enough points on the curve to accurately represent it. So how do we prevent aliasing? You have to use the right filter. We need to meet, we need to meet that rule that says we, we cut off or attenuate the frequencies. See, we're, we're trying to pass those SAEJ211 1000 hertz frequencies, but, but cut off everything above that so that we don't get aliasing. Now, lucky for you guys again, the hardware and the software typically these days has adjustable filters and when you type in a sampling rate that you want to use or pick it from a pick list, the hardware actually adapts and sets the filtering to avoid aliasing. 